everybody. I'm very happy to be here, and I just had my coffee, so I'm thinking clearly. <laughs> my name, by the way, is Cloda. And I'm talking about wellness by design, which is what really we're all about. Uh, for 38 years now, I've been working with uh, wellness, with all the modalities. Design is not a destination. You have to take it with you all along the path. And what we try to do is we try to make every sense triggered by what we do. So, for instance, on this pathway to Miraval, to the entry door of the spa in Tucson, there's the sound of water, there's fire, there's earth, there's the sound of birds, there's a crystal by the door to cl cleanse you before you walk into the spa. And this amazing symbol, which is in the Hopi Indians, is the gateway to wellness and to the fifth world. So you're already ready for your treatment by the time you go in. You're kind of cleansed. So every step you take is important. Total design, it's, it's a way of life for us in the studio. Uh, no matter what size we're working with, um, whether it's a small apartment or a multi-family dwelling or a huge hotel, uh, we go through the four C's, contemplate where you were, where you are now, and where you want to go. It can be a brand, as I say, or an apartment. Then you cleanse. And cleansing is the most important thing we can do, because if you don't cleanse your body, your mind, your soul, and your apartment, or your dwelling place, or your office, there's no room for the good luck to come in. You know, just get rid of all st stagnated ideas, and... Uh, wash them away <laughs> and clarify. Clarify where you want to take things, what's going to make you happy. Clean mind, clean design. And then you create. And then you t on the clean chalkboard, you create. That's my kids' chalkboard, or grandkids' chalkboard. So also, we, we involve the elements we, we c in every project that we do, because no project can be totally complete unless it involves earth, fire, water, wood, and metal. Uh, this is a swimming pool, for instance, uh, in a high rise. Um, there's a fire at the end of the pool. Uh, the earth, water, fire, the wood, and the metal are, for instance, a high rise in San Francisco where uh, it's 600 feet into the air. So you come in from at 30,000 feet, maybe down to the airport, into this building that soars up a 1,000 and something feet. You need to be grounded. And that's what we're doing with people today. They need to be grounded. They've got all their devices. They're all over the place. They're looking at their devices the whole time. They're on an aircraft. They're, they're, they're so nomadic. We ground people and we give them a visual hug when they walk into our spaces. Now, my toolbox of design modalities is really much larger at this than this, but here it is a five. Biophilia, which we all know now and talk about. We've all loved it all our lives since we were little kids. Um, but bringing the outside in and the inside out, it's doing a space grab in your garden or whatever land you have. That, that is a small dining room that gives out to a large patio, which used to have two cars parked in it. it it's, it's looking at stuff with your clean mind and thinking about wellness for the people who are living there. Then biogeometry is about how its shape uh, affects energy. There's, a lot, there's an awful lot to be said. We're not going to say it now because we don't have too much time. But it's a very important part of what we do. And this biogeometric ge symbol in the floor of an elevator in a 44-story hotel, it, it gives you power and resolution. So you walk in and you're already empowered. It's making the invisible tangible, really, but through symbolism. And chromotherapy, I was having a terrible row with my husband, who's here, sorry, Daniel. Uh, we were in New Zealand, and we, we came over a hill in, in, a, in a, a car with an open roof, and we're having this argument, and then suddenly the valley opened in front of us with fields and fields of lavender. The aroma came up and came in through the open roof, and suddenly we forgot what we were arguing about. <laughs> so, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> In chromotherapy, it's a good idea to have every color represented in your room or in your clothing, to have it s somewhere. 
And for instance, in this room, it's, it's all the colors are there. And we use light boxes for color often, rather than art that you have to interpret. And then feng shui, which is the earliest modality that I used, and I, I'm talking a long time ago, it's the, it's the placement of buildings, it's the placement of gardens, and it's also the flow of chi or energy throughout a building to make the building feel really comfortable. This here we have a, a totemic ancient pieces in the 10,000 square foot lobby. In that lobby, there's also a library nook with a fire so you can hang out if you're one of the in living in one of the 420 resi residences. And then we also have wabi-sabi, which is the natural aging of things. It's the Japanese honoring the natural aging of things, which is very nice for me as I'm getting older. I feel I might be getting more honored along the way. <laughs> and also, because wabi-sabi takes time, uh, we actually interfere with the surfaces of metals and wood. We sandblast, grind, and, uh, and, and treat them with acids. So they look like they've been there for a long time. And then they look fresh longer. They just get better as they get older. That's the way we want to be. We want to stop complacency with designers and architects, landscape architects, and so on. It's not about design. We're, we're, our studios, we're messengers. We're travel guides. We want to bring places, people to places they've never been in before. Just you know, st stop thinking about design, but think about the experience of spaces. And the lines of in are, of course, increasingly blurred between hospitality and, and uh, residential. Um, this is in Turkey, Six Senses, Kaplan Kaya, where you want to have a contextual experience. So when you come in, there's, here's this Ottomans upholstered with ancient Turkish killings. Just tell you where you are. Or, for instance, um, the alchemy uh, bar, where you can you walk in and you have a wave of scent from all the, the, the herbs that are on the wall. And because we think of ROI, as much as we don't like to, but we have to keep thinking about it, and, and uh, uh, rooms have to be multifunction. You can have a fabulous private dining experience here, or you can mix potions and lotions using the herbs and stuff from the garden. We talk about entering lobbies, and you want to say a, a little bit of, wow, that's great, but we also talk about going to your bedroom and saying, ah, if you're in a hotel. This double, this, this, this twin double uh, room has a, a desk that's slightly concealed, so even if you are working on your device, you're not going to make the other people feel guilty, hopefully. Also, it's very important in, in design and design for wellness uh, to keep the people in the hotel by having a, a different dining experiences, nomadic dining experiences. And this is an, an all-day experience where you can actually lounge by the fire uh, having a cocktail or have your breakfast out on the, on the, on the terrace in the deck. We forget the, how tactile, we, uh, how the, the sense of touch is so important. The weight of a door, the, a door that swings gracefully open for you but is weighty, is a really important way of entering a place. Or for instance, a restaurant where, uh, again, we think of ROI and value engineering, where we made a collage of broken tiles from an ancient tile factory at the either side of the fireplace, and the ancient doors open, and you're in a place where you can dine happily. But one of the things you have to remember when you're dining happily is that most people like to dine and actually talk to people and hear the other people speak. So there's cork on that ceiling. There's a reason. So this is Six Senses Duro Valley. I don't like always going to a restaurant where the plate comes out of the kitchen already plated, and I have no interfacing with the chef. I don't know what the hell's going on in the kitchen. So we'd like to have some kind of interfacing between the food and, and the people. And of course, an organic garden, which is the best thing in the world. And here we have another kind of quiet room. Again, it's an ah room, where, where everything that you need is there, nothing more than what you need. People make love more in hotels than, than anywhere else, apparently, because uh, not all that stuff all around them they have to worry about. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is a hotel in, uh, in Miami, quite a big hotel, about 350 rooms, something like that. But coming into a hotel at, at different times of day, we try to address that by making people happy through design. 
the, the uh, copper installation is called water music, and the water comes down from the pipes at diff differing speeds, so you have this gentle sound of water. <coughs> you have a, a, a really big ottoman that you can sprawl on or dump your bags on while you check in. But in a sense, more important, when you go come into a hotel lobby at night and the hotel's silent and closed, you, there's something kind of grim about it. So we devised this, this coffee bar, speaking of coffee, <laughs> uh, where the doors slide, you can actually have your croissant or your coffee, slide the doors, this is Miami, so it turns into a bar at 12 o'clock. <laughs> and then at night, everything closes and you have a giant glowing lantern. So that each experience, as I say, we're creating experiences, it's not about design, it's about figuring out what goes on behind that door, how it works, Contextual design and art consulting is part of what we do also. So we, we find a, a very lively graffiti artist who managed to do two walls in three days in the, in the stairs of the ballroom of the same hotel. And we're all about flirting too, because this is part of the life experience. It really is. It's what people like to do, see what's going on. So we have two different sets of stalls, one for male, one for a female, but everybody comes out and flirts in front of the view, washes their hands. When you can't have a spa in a, a hotel, I like to be create some kind of self-treatment where, where uh, guests can actually treat themselves and have fun. So that's a self-treatment, uh, cold water pool, hot pool, conversation pool, lap pool on a deck. So every guest have a, can have a little bit of fun. Well, <laughs> no. I have to tell you, these little, this little, these little guys come without a manual. You've got a manual for your car, for your blender, and everything else, and this kind of little creature arrives in your life, you don't know what the heck to do about it. <laughs> so uh, what we're encouraging people to do is do um, environmental audits in their home before the babies come, and make sure that the floor can be cleaned easily, and that, well, the ba babies, we all know, are leaky vessels. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we put mobiles over their cots because the babies come functioning perfectly normally, but their eye muscles need to be developed so the, so the, so the mobiles don't sway in the wind and help them to exercise their eyes. Any of us who have children know that children love to act, act out, and show us what they can do, so we always have a stage in a, in a children's room. And also cushions where the parents can lounge or the parents can maybe say goodnight uh, having their cocktails on that huge window seat while, the, while they're reading to their children. <laughs> but one of the things that for wellness for kids is they have to do things which are little on the edge, stretching themselves. And that's why they love going to Disneyland and stuff like that, because they get a little scared and then they realize they've conquered the fear. And that's part of our job is to bring this into homes and gardens as well. It's uh, all these experiences, for instance, that we've, we've got from our child now to our young families to have a lobby that's got everything that you can come down from your apartment and hang out by a fire, or because there may be a row going on in your apartment or somebody may be on a long distance call or something like that to come down into a quiet room where you can do yoga or where you can actually just sit and think. Because sitting and thinking has become increasingly difficult for everybody in today's world with all the devices, have we checked our devices as, as email come in and so on. We're trying to design that out of people's lives. For instance, here there's a cabanas in the lobby. What does a cabana say? I'm at the beach, you know. Here there's a room for a party up on the very, very top floor of a, of a building which has actually got 1,800 apartments in it. It's huge, but you can come up and create the hell of a row in this room. So you, we need to let loose. I mean, the dancing is great. Uh, dancing and noisiness and so on. We want to abate noise and we want to encourage people to make noise. It's all about release. Wellness is releasing what you've got pent up inside you. I used to have horses. When they were in a stable for a couple of days, they used to go crazy when they came out. Well, same with kids and people. And uh, all these vertical villages that we're building now uh, are, in a sense, uh, places where you can create a village green, uh, where everybody can come out and meet. Or for instance here, uh, a, a full-size ba size basketball court, or, um, or a gym, all with that co color orange, which is a Buddhist robe, and or it's, a, it's, a, it's a connectivity. 
are well as in the workplace where a big bowl of green apples um, with the sound of water, a small Buddha, and, uh, and one, of, uh, one of our favorite interns. <laughs> so we encourage people to bring their dogs to the workplace, serve healthy snacks, clean the air for them, and have lighting signs to uh, make sure the lighting is correct for every, every effort. Every room is a living room. This is a townhouse in uh, the, the West Village, by owned by a very glamorous person who entertains very glamorous people. But there again, it's very simple. You know, there's a green wall outside, there's a barbecue, th we use the old joists. So reusing is very good for, for emotionally too. It makes people s feel grounded. And to using the basement where the, uh, where the, uh, coal, uh, the coal used to come in as a waterfall and a, and a chef's table where the grown-ups could go and have a really lively dinner. And there again, a bedroom. What happens in a bedroom, you know? <laughs> and on the, on the top floor, uh, 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 infrared sauna. So there's a wellness from flo floor, to floor to ceiling. But there's a, actually an office on the mezzanine for the owner. And then as we get a little bit towards the departure lounge, we're going closer and closer to the departure lounge, um, having bathrooms that are silent, that they don't have clutter and busyness, and also that everybody should have a separate medicine cabinet. It's not a good idea to share medicine cabinets. And you can get cheap ones from Ikea, so don't tell me you can't afford it. It's possible. <laughs> Shared closets. The closets have been cleaned. An apartment, for instance, that uh, where somebody can have, uh, a couple can have a whole, maybe 15 people in for dinner or for fundraising that you can cover up the television. Uh, and there's a piano that people actually play. I want to get rid of the stagnation in people's lives. If they have something there, they should use it because unused things simply weigh you down. It's, it's not wellness. And it's a, a massive art piece. <laughs> we decided to. <laughs> so this is an ongoing battle in our family and everybody's family. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's, everybody's crap, basically. How do you get rid of it? <laughs> you never see a U-Haul that's following a hearse. Remember this. <laughs> never. <laughs> when I'm thinking about life, I think about the ancient Egyptians and what they used to do when somebody was toddling over to the other side. That person would arrive at the Egyptian version of the pearly gate. They would not be allowed in, into paradise unless they had answered in the affirmative to two questions. Did you find a joy? Did you bring joy? I add one to that. Did you leave joy? Did you leave joy behind you? Did you have a, did you have a carefully prepared death? Sh because you should be ready any time. It can happen, you know, it's not, it's not, <laughs> It's not something you can control, right? <laughs> no. So this is the departure lounge I'm talking about. These sadhus in uh, Kathmandu were the happiest people I have ever seen. When I photographed them, they were hugging me. It was, they had two begging bowls and they were extraordinarily happy. I mean, that's true wellness. These are my grandkids playing in the grass with nothing, just playing with each other and rolling around on a hill. This is another grandchild on the beach with a dog, just joyful in clean air, having fun. You don't need a lot of stuff, but you do have to design for wellness. You do have to banish any other ancient outdated ideas we've ever had. We leave footprints in the sands of time, they say, and I think it's a very funny expression because they're actually erased within 24 hours. The tide takes care of that. And when we are, if we have answered all our questions correctly and we have arrived in where we had intended to be, <laughs> no, <laughs> it would be very nice if they added a spa. <laughs> Please welcome to the Thank stage. you very Thank much. You. Thank you.